I can remember sitting in a blue chair. My fingers and toes were suddenly cold and my face was clammy. I was praying the parents sitting across the table from me couldn't hear the tremor in my voice or see the anxiety written across my face. I avoided eye contact as I started reading standard scores. Reviewing evaluations can still make me quake, but I actually kind of like those meetings now. When I left my last parent meeting, I walked out feeling like I had truly made a difference. I felt like I had given the parents important insight into how their child processed the world. We all left smiling and on good terms. This feeling is empowering and I want you to experience that empowerment too. Before I go into a meeting, I always make sure I am prepared. For me, this looks like writing an impeccable report. I like to write out everything I want to say in my report. So all I have to do is read it and know I am hitting everything. To make sure I don't forget any details, I like to write my report as close to completing the evaluation as possible. This makes it easier to add anecdotes and examples that I think are relevant. Parents love things like examples or quotes their child said. It helps them to picture what I am talking about and what happened during the evaluation. Since weeks can sometimes pass between the evaluation and the parent meeting, I will always reread my report right before the meeting. This helps me keep my mind on the student at hand and remember the things I want to say. My high school orchestra teacher used to say, if you don't know how to play an excerpt of a piece, then fake with fire. Even if I don't feel confident about a meeting, I take that advice to heart. When I'm in a meeting, I adjust my body language to take a confident stance. I lean forward, smile, and ask the parents questions about their life. I compliment their child and tell them a cute story about our time together. This softens the atmosphere in the room. Both parents and school personnel come into these meetings with apprehension. Parents are worried about the news they will receive. School personnel are tired, overworked, and worried that parents will be upset about things beyond our control. If we go into meetings accepting this and being empathetic to all parties involved, it will calm anxious nerves. Overexplain everything to the parents. Put everything in layman's terms. Provide op Provide observational data, developmental norms, and standard scores. Explain what the testing experience was like for their child. Let parents know exactly what you were looking for and how you measured it. Be sure to stop frequently and ask parents if they have questions or input. This helps them feel heard and lets them be an active participant in the meeting. When I first started as an SLP, I would gloss over the recommendations at the end of my report. I figured parents would read them if they really wanted them. I figured that, like me, they were mostly interested in the standard scores and the results of the evaluation. What I now know is that parents really need those recommendations. They need to feel like there is a plan in place to help their child at home and at school and the plan needs to be easy to implement and remember. We also need to make sure our recommendations are specific for the child we are evaluating. It can be so tempting to just copy and paste a giant list of generic bullet points, but this isn't very helpful. Currently, I like to give around five to 10 recommendations based on the student's age and specific needs. I always read these to parents and I always explain why I am making that specific recommendation. I like to end the meeting by asking parents if what they are seeing at home is similar to what I saw during our evaluation. 
Sometimes they say, yeah, it's the same. And other times they say their child acts completely different at home. This gives me valuable information about the child and the parents. It also allows me to explain that sometimes our students act very differently at home or at school. There could be a variety of reasons for this, but overall we want to improve the child's functioning at school. So we need to meet the student where they are functioning academically. This makes parents feel validated and it makes them feel and know that I trust them and value their input. As with all things in life, evaluation review meetings take practice and get better with time and experience. But my parting piece of wisdom to you is that most parents just want to help their child. And if they truly feel like you authentically want to help their child, they will trust you.